breathing, guys. So Shruti is there, Jignasa is there. And Shraddha is uh, also there. Acknowledge me once you are able to hear me uh, properly and see the screen properly. Just Right, Shruti, are you able to hear me properly? Yes, sir. Okay, Preeti is there. So we have got uh, joining wherein uh, we must start with a lecture. Uh, before we go ahead, I would like to talk about a bit uh, for our uh, assignments given to you guys. Uh, guys, what I've observed is only Preeti has done maximum assignments, whereas almost all of you have not done any assignments. Uh, I think Shruti has uh, submitted certain assignments, not all of them. I did not receive any assignments from Jidnyasa. Um, from Shraddha, I haven't received any assignment. Uh, from Sakshi, I haven't received any assignments. Uh, Jay, only a few, I suppose, one or two. Preet, only one, I suppose, right? So I want people to take these assignments seriously because you people cannot just uh, neglect those assignments. Once they have been given to the timeline, you must complete that within timeline. Yes? Yes, guys. So we have yes, uh, Yunus as well joining in. Jinnya, sir, why, didn't know, why you did not uh, submit any assignments till now? Jitnasa. Why well, you did not sub submit any assignments? Altamash also did not submit any assignments till now. No assignments from Altamash. From Yunusa as well. Only Priti had submitted the maximum number of assignments. Nobody else. <clears throat> Okay, so before we go ahead, uh, Shruti, can you just brief me about what we covered in our last lecture of uh, ethics, integrity, and aptitude? Uh, the last topic that we covered, just brief me about it and then we'll go ahead. Anushka is also joining. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello. Yes. So, uh, Shruti. Uh, sir. Yes. So, uh, yes, sir. So, what did we cover in our last lecture? Just brief me about it and then. Uh, we'll go go uh, uh, good governance about good governance about uh, like uh, irrespective of uh, irrespective of gender caste or race or right. any discriminating factors uh, you have to govern uh, properly uh, also you talk about the four pillars uh, yeah. of the uh, good governance of ethics uh, like good attitude uh, mm -hmm. you gave example of chandra group morya uh, and efficacy to resolve, uh, to know and resolve the issue. Very good. Uh, also, you talked about uh, uh, right attitude. One must keep right attitude while, like, to keep track of what you have done. Very good. Uh, Very about good. right attitude. Uh, uh, defaults. Uh, some uh, defaults in uh, bureaucracy in India, like it is too large and slow. People right. are rigid to change. Right. Uh, then. Uh, <laughs> I think 
Yes, sir, I'm done with that. Okay, uh, Jinnya sir, can you throw some more mm -hmm. light over it? Jinnya sir. Kindly unmute yourself. Yes, so I wanted I want to know that this lecture was on good governance, right? So what what are the things yes. that you understood from good governance? Um yes, please go ahead. I think there is like a uh, social development should some or the other way happen. Okay, should happen through what? What is good governance? What is good governance that we discussed in the last lecture? Because uh, today we are dealing with code of conduct, right? So yes. Yes, sir, you are not uh, you are not revising stuff. So understand that, right? So I can easily understand from you people. Um, uh, you people's uh, uh, response over the questions that I give, right? So, so yeah. when you start beating around the bush, I can clearly understand that those people have not prepared, not revised. Yes. So this examination is all about revision. Understand that the questions yes, are, are not that difficult. Anushka, yes, Anushka, please go ahead. Just let me know what do you understand by good governance and what are the pillars. Explain the four pillars which are there. In good governance. Yes, Anushka. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought I was unmuted. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so good governance is basically a uh, good administration uh, of uh, the like uh, good administration by the government that ensures good governance, like mm -hmm. making proper schemes for the people um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, working uh, with honesty, loyal, uh, loyalty, no corruption, mm -hmm. and uh, doing things for the betterment of the people. Uh, the four pillars of good governance are ethos. Mm. or ethics equity mm. and efficiency okay uh, so yes. uh, good anushka uh, but i want uh, you people to revise all these things in detail right? so um, i expect good answers from you people because without that nothing can be serving the purpose it's all about you people engaging here with me right it's not about just me talking and speaking here it's about you people all scoring in your ideas as to how good governance can be achieved. Yes? Yes. Sir. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so let's move ahead, guys. Let's go ahead and discuss today's topic. I hope everyone is able to see the uh, presentation. Right? PPT, everyone is able to see it. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, code of conduct is something which we are going to discuss today. First of all, uh, we discussed the question that why code of conduct is needed. The question which arises is what is code of conduct? Right. So can you just tell me what is code of conduct? What do you understand by code of conduct? Preeti, can you just tell me what is code of conduct? Code of conduct is a set of rules which are to be followed, whether in, uh, it is an uh, institute, whether it is an institute or in governance. Very good, very good. So code of conduct, basically, now here in this case, we are talking about the government. So a code of conduct basically talks about the set of rules that every institution, every organization, whether it is public or a private institution, it follows, right? So you must understand that code of conduct means that. Okay, so let's move further ahead. I'll take you to the next part of it. This is just uh, the brief introduction of what we uh, mean by this. Uh, so, as I have already told you, it's outlining the responsibilities uh, of or proper practices for an individual party or organization, right? So, a uh, code of conduct would always be there for a process, for an institution, for, let's say, 
uh, there are small um, steps involved in the, into a bigger process. In those small steps as well, there are code of conduct. Now, uh, the code of conduct can be for an individual and can be for an organization as a whole. Understand that. Let's say if you are a part of the government machinery, there are certain set of rules that you individually would follow. And there are certain set of rules and regulations which the organization as a whole would follow. Right? So the code of conduct is a set of rules outlining those responsibilities altogether. Right? So overall speaking, code of conduct, conduct are nothing but principles, values, standards, or rules of behavior that guide your decisions, procedures, and systems of an organization in a way that contributes to the welfare of its key stakeholders. Understand that. So something okay. which contributes to the welfare of whom? The key stakeholders. Let's say if we people are the citizens of India, you, me, everyone is contributing into the GDP of the country. Everybody is contributing in payment of the taxes of the country. These people are the key stakeholders. Getting this idea? Okay. Yes, I want your acknowledgement, guys. Yes, sir. It's never one sided. Yes, sir. I want you people to get involved here with me. If you have any doubts, any questions, kindly raise your hand. Definitely, I'll be getting back to you. Right? So, um, what I've just told you is the set of rules, regulations, and principles in the rules of behavior which definitely contributes to the welfare of whom? The key stakeholders. Understand that. And who are the key stakeholders? Everyone who is contributing to the economy. Everyone, right? So everyone is a key stakeholder. And it, uh, not only does that, it also respects the rights of all constituents affected by its operations. So let's say there are key stakeholders who are there, but they are not getting affected by the direct actions of the organization. Understand that. But there are a few people who will be getting affected by the actions of the organization. Getting this idea? So, code of conduct should also take care of the rights and should also take care of the, uh, uh, you know, this is what has been mentioned here as well, respects the right of all the constituents affected by its operations. Getting this idea? So, any organization which functions, it must also um, see that uh, all those people who are getting affected should also be taken care of directly or indirectly. Am I clear with this, guys? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. so yes. is basically defined like this. That's a general definition, right? Whenever when we talk, uh, we talk about codes, these are to be referred for our ultimate references. Let's say if there is some misconduct going on in the government department or government organization. So what do you refer to? This is the question, right? What do you refer to if you really want uh, the organization to function efficiently for good governance, right? So what do you refer? You would refer to the code of conduct of that organization and institution for dealing with any issue or dealing with any problem. Now, guys, uh, in our lectures previously, I had also talked about certain charters. Like citizen charter is one amongst them. I talked about citizens charter, right? Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh, so, can somebody yes. tell me what is citizens charter quickly? Somebody tell me, Altamash. What do you understand by citizens charter? Altamesh, what do you understand by citizens' charter? Who is one plus five T? I have not put the name. <clears throat> yeah, kindly go ahead. Anyone? What is citizens' charter? What do you understand by citizens' uh, charter? It's so basically a kind of a document uh, that uh, like uh, specifies uh, specifies the rights of the citizens. Right. Okay, now let me just explain what is Citizens Charter. Uh, you people have not understood what Citizens Charter, Charter actually means. Now, these days, all the government machineries are having their websites. Now, these websites 
can be basically regarded as this business charter. Actually, with the advent of IT Act, Information Technology Act, the people have started making uh, websites and putting this publicly. Otherwise, before you, uh, before the IT Act was in place, or before the government machineries were online, everything. If you want to know about the department, you have to physically go to that department and look for a place where you can find all the information, right? So there were certain problems. Now, what was the, what was the problem? Let me just explain you. First of all, where to go, whom to ask for which information, right? That's something which was quite questionable. कि भाई हम लोग गए और एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में एक डिपार्टमेंट में मान के चलिए बीएमसी ऑफिस गए और बीएमसी ऑफिस में जाने के बाद हमको लगा कि हम बर्थ सर्टिफिकेट निकालना है तो हम कहा जाए हम लोग सिर्फ ढूंढ रहे पूछ रहे इंक्वायरी डेस्क भी नहीं लगा हुआ है हम सिर्फ घूम रहे क्योंकि कहीं पे लिखा भी नहीं है कहीं पे बोर्ड भी नहीं तो क्या हो रहा है ऐसी सिचुएशन में ऐसी सिचुएशन में वी पीपल आर नॉट एबल टू गेट वॉट वी एक्चुअली वॉन्ट तो क्या होगा अंडर सर्टन सर्कमस्टांसिस Citizens Charter Act was enacted, wherein uh, that was a mandate that in front of every office there must be the mention of the services that the organization should be providing. Let's say, if you go to BMC office, you have to provide a birth certificate, provide a marriage certificate, provide a name of the department, the name of the department, and you have to mention it in the front of every office, which floor and which department is available. So, this is the part of Citizens Charter. Ka part hai. Citizen Charter is nothing but a document, or uh, you can say a public document, maybe available online or in front of the office, which gives you complete information about what are the services provided by the institution or the organization, and who all are the people responsible for availing that kind of a service. Right? Their names, their contact details, their email IDs, everything is mentioned generally on the. Citizens Charter. The phone numbers are mentioned. So even if you go to Mantrale, let's say, if you have ever been to Mantrale, so if you have a chance to visit there, you should definitely go there. There are details in Mantrale, which department is there, its details. If you go to Mantrale, which department is there, you should go to the department. So the department is secretary, who is the deputy, under secretary, who is the additional secretary, who is the names of everyone, all the board line numbers are there. वो क्यों दिए होते हैं भाई टू मेक इट गुड टू मेक गवर्नेंस गुड राइट सो लेट्स से एनी मिसहैप हैपेंस एंड यू आर सपोज्ड टू फाइंड आउट द राइट प्लेस टू गो वेर वुड यू गो टू यू वुड गो टू द राइट डिपार्टमेंट द प्लेस ऑफ पब्लिक रिट्रेसल ऑफ द ग्रीवेंसेस राइट सो यू विल गो देयर एंड अल्टीमेटली दो this that is code of conduct getting this idea they will also yes. refer to the code of conduct yes, if any organization's uh, code of conduct says that any uh, uh, anything which has happened is incorrect then definitely they would take actions against you right but now again a question here arises that question is that whether the codes which are written were correct or not right मान के चलिए कि सेट ऑफ रूल्स फॉलो कर रहे हैं और सेट ऑफ रूल्स जो है वो खुद ही फ्लॉड है राइट खुद ही फ्लॉड सेट ऑफ रूल्स है सो दिस फ्लॉड सेट ऑफ रूल्स वुड नॉट बेनिफिट गेटिंग दिस आइडिया बिकॉज़ अल्टीमेटली दोस मेनी ऑफ द रूल्स वर मेड एट द टाइम ऑफ ब्रिटिशर्स एंड ब्रिटिशर्स नेवर वांटेड टू अवेल सच काइंड ऑफ सर्विस टू पीपल एंड नेवर वांटेड टू हेल्प द इंडियंस ठीक है यस At, at at a few uh, uh, stage uh, you can a uh, few stages in the in our history but whereas uh, in some stages we were also helping indians i may not say that they uh, were completely uh, uh, you know against uh, you can say so somebody has some question yes uh, yes so uh, i think that one plus 5t is me this is akshi here yeah uh, i had a question to ask yes. yeah, yeah, so in this uh, citizens charter um like you mentioned that it is usually displayed outside the companies you know, like uh, for the both public and private sector does right. it also include the vision and the mission like yes uh, yes, yes yes so that's a very a good question that you had asked so Char citizens charter does not only include 
the details about what services they are providing but yes it also includes the vision mission um, let's say if you have got some issues the redressal mechanism uh, what is the process of doing it with that kind of a redressal of the mechanism the stepwise process each and every detail is given in the citizen charter it's all about let's say when you go to an office and if you want to do something let's say if you want to avail a birth certificate simplest of a simple example if you want to avail a birth certificate what kind of a form you must fill what is the procedure of filling the form what are the documents you must attach with this all the details and documents uh, according to the mentioned on the citizen's charter so agar aap abhi koi bmc ke office ke ya fir bmc ki website pe chale jao theek hai to wahan par hi ye sari cheeze mention hoti hai ke birth certificate avail karwana hai to ye sare documents hai yahan pe leke aana hai और ये ये टाइम है ये टाइम के बीच में आपने वहां पर डॉक्यूमेंट लेना है राइट सो दैट्स हाउ इट इज करेंगे सो सिटीजन स्टार्टर इंक्लूड्स दैट्स अ मूव टुवर्ड्स गुड गवर्नेंस बट लेट्स से इफ एनीथिंग रॉन्ग हैपेंस सो व्हाट दे वुड रेफर टू दे वुड रेफर टू द कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट राइट सो कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट मस्ट बी राइट मस्ट नॉट बी फ्लॉड इफ द कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट इज फ्लॉड देन अल्टीमेटली एवरीथिंग एल्स इज टेकन फॉर अ राइट सो व्हाई वी आर सेइंग दिस बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस very important statement codes are the ultimate terms of reference can you see idea codes may be utilized the word code may be utilized interchangeably for other purposes as well but what we mean here is the laws these are the laws or the bylaws of an organization of an institution that must be followed right now let's say if i ask you what are code of conduct code of conduct would not mostly include the things to be done code of conduct mostly would include the things which are prohibited yes or no mm-hmm. yes yes, yes. yes. getting this right i'll repeat myself once again code of conduct would include the prohibited things mostly i would say 90% of the times the things that are immoral the things that are not supposed to be done would be mentioned in the code of the conduct okay. whereas the things which are supposed to be done are not very much mentioned into the code of conduct and that part forms a part of only 10% this is something we must work upon now jaise banke se liye code of conduct mein likha hota hai ye nahi karna chahiye wo nahi karna chahiye official ne bribe nahi lena chahiye ye nahi lena chahiye wo nahi lena chahiye nahi lena chahiye nahi karna chahiye ye sab cheeze bahut mention hai kya karna chahiye aisi cheeze jo hai wo kam mentioned hoti hai code of conduct right yes yeah. so there are code of conduct and codes of behavior and these are designed to anticipate and prevent certain specific types of behavior so there can be conflict of interest there can be self dealing there can be bribery there can be inappropriate actions all these things are mentioned uh, and how to deal with under certain circumstances are mentioned under uh, uh, this uh, code of conduct right so all the code of conduct can be brief most often they are fairly lengthy and detailed right so mm. they are fairly lengthy and detailed uh, stuff right so as i already told you more than do's most of the code of conduct focus on don'ts right this is what i have just mentioned right now right so eventually understand one more important thing why code of conduct is important code of conduct is not only important for the external relationship of an organization it is also important for the internal harmony of the organization not only it is beneficial for the people like you and me who are the beneficiaries of the civil services but yes for the employees as well am i clear with this yes sir yes okay so yes. be with me stay yes, with me uh, this is something which is very much important today's session is very very important and i as i have already told you we have we have been discussing uh, about the uh, ethics integrity subject that it gets integrated in your personality slowly and steadily over years it may take generations as well to make uh, the system completely ethical and uh, integrity uh, 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 decline right so it is uh, inclined towards integrity right am i clear with this yes Yes. 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 Okay. So stay with me, guys. Um, we will uh, further uh, discuss about the standards that are set. Right. 
so the standards of code of conduct do change over a time how many of you build, uh, uh, agree with me the code of conduct yes. or the standards that we set for the code of conduct they change over a period of time how many of you agree with me yes yes sir i agree right yes you agree with me right and that definitely has to change over a time over a bit of time why because uh, we have defined sort of code of conduct which in your personal behavior interpersonal behavior when you are talking to someone uh, face to face but let's say if we have not defined any code of conduct while communicating over mails while communicating over uh, phone calls so that something is not included into the code of conduct then if you are starting misbehaving as uh, i mean the loophole into the code of conduct that that is not done right so code of conduct it undergoes change as i have already told you that with the advent of technology the code of conduct has also undergone change that how to use the technology and technologically and apart from that not only technology uh, uh, social circumstances also have an impact on the actions that are prohibited right so there were certain social circumstances yes. earlier which may not be prevailing now so a certain code of conduct may be obsolete today not of any use but there are certain new set of uh, uh, code of conduct which must be incorporated because the social economic situation currently uh, is somewhat different am i clear with this right yes sir okay yes, sir. Uh, now you see every organization have got a different set of code of conduct which have got certain overlapping areas as well now what i actually mean by this every organization will say that you should work for the betterment of the citizens right every government department would say you should work for the betterment of the citizens so there are certain areas which are overlapping for every organization but there are areas of differences as well where in the areas um, um, every department has got a special uh, specialized area of working so for those specialized area of working you need to have a code of conduct am i clear right so there can be common and uncommon stand alone um, as well as certain uh, common standards as well which are there for uh, code of conduct now this is what we understood about uh, what is code of conduct how it should change so it's time for us to understand why is code of conduct important why is code of conduct important so uh, i want a very very uh, precise answer from any of you why do you think that the code of conduct is important um you so can answer yes please go ahead uh because without a code of conduct or a proper set uh, of instructions to follow or uh, there would be there would be a lot of chaos which would delay everybody's work mm -hmm. right this is one good uh, reason for code of conduct yes dinya sir please go ahead i think uh, even if we are following it like mm -hmm. there is a lot of chaos happening in the offices or like the places of work mm -hmm. so uh, without following it so it is it will just not happen as it is working now it mm -hmm. now that you mean to say that even if the code of conduct is in place yes the implementation is not proper this is what you mean it's not proper yes um so yes uh, priti can you go ahead <sighs> just tell me so uh, the question yeah please why do you think that the code of conduct is important sir so to maintain harmony among the employees as well okay um, and uh, for the rights of employees all right very good very good so uh, uh, that's uh, this is something which is uh, essential that you have uh, just mentioned now right so the thing is that uh, you have just said so internal harmony Right, for internal harmony, uh, uh, as well as for uh, you can say uh, external relationship of the organization with uh, the people, code of conduct is of utmost yes. importance. Code of conduct is important in everybody's life. Uh, let's say if there is a party, a political party, it is important for them. Right, so for, for whom it is important? I'm just uh, explaining you. First of all, the political leaders. 
who are the temporary members of the executive uh, team. There are permanent members of the executive team, like uh, the civil servants, right? So those people have got the different set of code of conduct. Yes. So it's important for these people. Why is this important for a very beautiful cordial relationship between um, the uh, political leaders, administrative, uh, uh, you can say civil servants, right? And furthermore, the relationship with the people outside, the beneficiaries of the civil services, right? So uh, if you see, code of conduct is important because it tells us about the unacceptable behaviors as well as it also provides the vision for which the government official is striving. So effective codes so, operate at two levels, that is an institutional level and the symbolic level. Institutional and symbolic, right? Symbolic. So within institutions, uh, codes articulate boundaries of the behavior as well as the expectations for behavior. So boundaries as well as the expectations of those behaviors, right? So that is, uh, they provide clear markers as to what behavior is prohibited. So, which behavior is purely prohibited and which behavior is expected out of you. So, they are also highly symbolic, you can say. So, subscribing to institutional codes is a way to find a model professional, not only we see ourselves, but as we want to be seen by others. So, let's say if you go into the government machinery, so, um, if you see as an institution, one organization is working properly, but symbolically, if you see um, uh, some of the departments, like police department, is very uh, unfamous among the people, and uh, uh, which is recognized as one of the most corrupt departments, right? The police department. But kind of a, uh, you know, the thing has been created, an image has been created outside. Uh, into the minds of the people that all the police officers are corrupt. Right? So therefore, successful codes provide a standard of public servants to, uh, to strive for, uh, as well as articulating a special sense of responsibility because of the public servant's professional standing in his or her own community. So understand that institutional code of conduct, if you follow properly, you will not only have a good uh, image uh, within the organization, but you have a good image within the community as well, right? So, <clears throat> as uh, Jidnyasa rightly observed and said, the codes are not self-implementing, right? Once you yes. print the codes, you define the codes, now it's time for the institutional fabric for, the, for developing the code, communicating it, interpreting it, training uh, or education of the code, enforcing it and assessing it. Right? I'll just repeat yes. what I've just said. Just by printing the codes would not serve the purpose. You have yes. Once you have finalized, you must have an institutional fabric for developing the code. First of all, once you have developed, that does not mean that cannot undergo change. It may also undergo change, right? So, you have a procedure that if you have a new code, then you can add it. दूसरा एक अगर कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट लिख दिया किताबों में बंद पड़ा हुआ है लोगों को पता ही नहीं ऐसा कुछ कोड फॉलो करते तो दैट्स नॉट हाउ इट वर्क्स कम्युनिकेटिंग इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट कम्युनिकेट किया है तो उसका राइट right इंटरप्रिटेशन भी होना जरूरी है समझ में आ राइट कि भाई कम्युनिकेट किया बताया तो सही कि भाई ऐसी ऐसी सिचुएशन में अगर आया कोई बंदा आपके पास ऐसी ऐसी सिचुएशन में आया तो उसे आपने कुछ किसी भी हालत में कुछ भी ऐसा पैसा नहीं लेना दैट वुड बी रिगार्डेड एज ब्राइबरी तो इसका मतलब ये कि भी दूसरी सिचुएशन में आया और उसने पैसे दिया तो ब्राइबरी नहीं कंसीडर करेंगे क्या उसे तो दैट्स समथिंग व्हिच इज एन इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ समथिंग राइट सो दैट हैज टू बी द राइट इंटरप्रिटेशन वंस इंटरप्रिटेशन इज डन द ट्रेनिंग एंड द एजुकेशन ऑन द कोड मस्ट आल्सो बी देयर नाउ यू मस्ट आल्सो स्टार्ट एनफोर्सिंग इट एंड असेसिंग इट क्लियर गेटिंग द साइड यस so enforce yes. करना और उसको timely assess करना is important. You have communicated. It's a continuous process. Understand that. आपने एक बार communicate कर दिया, interpret करके सबको बता दिया. Now everyone knows that. But you must start keep on enforcing it always and keep on assessing it always. Right? ये तो ऐसा होगा कि मतलब आपने assess जो है assess नहीं किया और 
you just uh, you are just keeping on uh, you have just given the information once and printed the codes and you have said ki abhi aapne aap se dekh lo kar lo ye sab cheeze aapne follow karni hai to aise mein implement nahi hoga kyunki maan ke chale ki agar institution mein kuch galat ho raha hai ek bande ko pata kaise chalega jab dusra banda galat kar raha hai jab wo ek pehla jo banda hai usko uski information hogi ya knowledge hoga right right how can a person be a whistle blower a person can be a whistle blower only when he knows the rules and regulations by himself right am i clear with this guys yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. very good so so in a broader sense codes are also used to help reengineer organizations can i say that yes yes okay yes. so uh, now while fabricating the codes there are the stakeholders who must be involved into it right so i want you people to just ponder upon it that who all should be involved into the formulation of the code of conduct in the meantime i'll just take a, a short water break you just think over it i'll ask you in just 2 minutes Okay guys so uh Yes, Preeti. Please go ahead. Let me know yes. who all are the people for, who should be involved in designing the code of conduct. So, if it is an organization, the stakeholders or the shareholders uh, should be referred to, and also uh, the uh, the makers. the shareholders or the stakeholders, they can take reference from other organizations' code of conduct. Right. Very good. uh i have i think uh, uh sakshi also wants to answer yes please go ahead sakshi yes sir so um, apart the mainly all the experts from the business whoever it is beat any organization they should be involved in thinking you can be also loud, they, uh, uh sakshi uh is this better now yeah yes so yes i was saying that all the experts from the business whoever it is be it in different departments or right. uh, different organizations they right. should be involved right. apart from that uh, i believe even the legal team or someone who is from the legal part of it should right. also be involved right. and